theater of beans. <laughs> How many goals have they scored from that? Hardly any. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It's a put away in their starting lineup for fans. We're back. It's game week 12, the post-week show. Stuart Brooks has prior commitments. He's not here right now. He prefers to do other things over unpunditry, um, his full-time job. Um, turn off your PlayStation, put the kids to bed. Uh, we've got Johnny with us this week. Say hello. Hi, Lucas. Thanks for having me on board this week. Looking forward to it. It's all good. You're a perfect replacement for Stuart. Um, been on the show before, so you know how we like to do things. Uh, we're going to kick off the week. Uh, we've got Leeds versus West Ham. Uh, West Ham winning 2-1. Uh, two-headed goals sealed the three points for the Hammers after Jared Gillett, the Australian referee uh, in the VAR position, gave um, a retaken penalty uh, to Leeds, which gave them the 1-0 lead. Um but I think both teams definitely had chances. They both could have won. Both keepers played exceptionally well. Um, as I said last week, Ogbonna, probably one of the most underrated centre-backs in the league, scored his second in, two, in three games, um, which sealed the points. Declan Rice was my man of the match. Okay, so for Stewart, same game multi. He had Leeds to win, but they did not win. He also had Patrick Bamford as an anytime goal scorer. Unfortunately, that didn't pay off. Uh, he did, however, predict both teams to score successfully. Lucas, I just wanted to uh, make a note on this game. Lucas Fabianski saved the penalty and VAR completely overturned it, which I think is an absolute disgrace and very frustrating and one of the biggest issues at the moment. Definitely. I think it was very inconclusive. I think his heel was like almost well, pretty much on the line and we thought they'd get the benefit of the doubt, the goalkeeper. But um, obviously not. Anyway, um, next game, we've got Wolves versus Aston Villa. Aston Villa winning 1-0, a 94th minute penalty. Um, I think it was Semedo bringing down John McGinn inside the box. And uh, who tucked it away? Um, El Ghazi, I think, scored the penalty. Um, look, Wolves, yeah, the Wolves look, looking unconvincing in the final third once again. Um, and it's interesting to note, even though Adama Traore has been playing okay, he's yet to register a goal or assist in 19 matches. I don't think that's good enough. Um, there might be a team issue. It probably is a team issue. Um, Villa probably deserved more out of this probably deserved the three points due to the run of play. Um, Villa intent probably about where they should be now that both United teams are, are creeping further up the table, slowly, slowly. Um, John McGinn was my man of the match. Okay, so for Stewart's multi, he's, he won two out of the three legs. He successfully predicted an Aston Villa win and no for both teams to score. Unfortunately, Jack Grealish was well contained and did not even register a shot on target. So fair play to the Wolves on that, who are very solid defensively generally. And I do think they were a little bit unfortunate to concede the penalty right at the end. Uh, one more thing I have to add is no Raul Jimenez. I do not see how the Wolves are going to score as many goals this season. That is a big area of improvement that they need to sort out immediately. Yeah, they've got Fabio Silva, I think, up front. It was their record signing fee for the team. It was like 30-odd million. Hasn't proved himself yet. Uh, we'll see in the coming weeks. Um, Newcastle versus West Brom was the next game. Newcastle winning 2-1. Almiron scored after 20 seconds. Um, after a De Bruyne-like pass from Joel Linton. Um, Furlong equalised uh, just after halftime, I think. Um, then a marvellous Dwight Gale header. Um Make securing the points for Newcastle. Um, Steve Bruce slowly, slowly seems to be getting more out of Jollington um, and is forming an exciting partnership with Callum Wilson, and that's going to be pivotal uh, for if Newcastle are going to stay up this season. Um, West Brom need to shore up their defence um, if they have any chance of staying up, uh, which is probably unlikely at this point in time. Gale was my man of the match. Okay, with Stuart Brooks's same game multi for this one, Newcastle did win. However, he predicted under 2.5 goals, which wasn't the case. And he thought that Callum Wilson would have one or more shots on target, which didn't eventuate. Uh, nothing for me to add to this match. You summarised it really well, Lucas. And on to the next one. Cool. cool. 
earlier, earlier I actually caught up with one of our new employees, Eddie. Um, he was, was at, at the sidelines to cover the Manchester Derby. We had a nil-nil Manchester Derby. Reporting from the sidelines is Eddie. Talk to me, Eddie. Uh, Ole said it was our best performance in a derby. Is this true? Yeah, hey, Lucas. Thanks for having me on the show. As you can see, I'm down by the sidelines here. So uh, I've got the best view of the game. Look, Ollie's always said whatever he's wanted to say, and I think he's saying what he needs to say to keep the Man U fans happy and keep the team happy. It was a good performance from the defense, but I can't exactly say it was the best performance from players like Rashford, players like Greenfoot, who've obviously, you know, they've had a massive impact on games in the past. I don't see why Manchester City should be any different. So I think it's pretty unfair on people who are expecting goals to be scored by some of the young talent in the side to simply... uh, stand by the fact that it was apparently the best performance that Manchester United's put out there against Manchester City, especially considering that we've won in the past. In the last three games, we've had two wins. So there you go. Don't know what else you want me to say because uh, yeah. I'd expect goals from those players. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Paul Pogba had a sub-par performance uh, this game. Um, it was brought back into the starting lineup. Is it right? Um, sorry, is it wrong to single out a player that's clearly unsettled or is it justified? Well, look... Uh... You know, I don't know, with Paul Pogba, sometimes he shows up, sometimes he doesn't. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, he's playing in such an important position. He's, he's sort of moved around the field. He's played a holding midfielder role. Um, you know, he was sort of playing on the left side of the field this game. So he's clearly unsettled. And uh, it just shows because he's moving all around the pitch and he's never played in a consistent position for more than a season. So I think it is uh, honestly justified when you're talking about a, a player that's played at the top level, one of the best midfielders in the world. You just want him to perform the same way that De Bruyne performs for City. So I think, uh, you know, either he needs to look in the mirror or he kind of needs a a kick in the stomach to get himself going because we know how well he can play. Uh, So, yeah, I'd like to see more out of him. And last question, Ole, yes or no? Um, Well, look, he's there. Um, I think the fact is is that uh, there's a manager in a team, but there's also 11 players. There's also people higher up the hierarchy. It's, uh, It's an enterprise. And I think uh, the blame definitely boils down to more than just Oli. I think uh, he's doing what he can. But again, you know, Liverpool sat on Jurgen Klopp and look what they are now. It's, uh, you know, you you sit on a manager and sometimes you reap the rewards. You know, still uh, seven years on from the retirement of Alex Ferguson, we're not. Manchester United's not settled. Uh, They need a manager that they can rely on for at least more than a few seasons. And even if they come fourth, fourth, third, fourth, Eventually, you break through and you get that title that title team together. So I think uh, I'm backing Oli for the time being. And I think uh, so long as we can stay in the Champions League contention spots against a team like Liverpool now, that's that's still a pretty good effort. Cool. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, we'll see you very shortly. No problem. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, Eddie. Once again, um, the next game we had Everton versus Chelsea. Chelsea Everton, sorry, winning 1-0 after Edouard Mendili bundled over Calvert-Lewin. Um, Sigurdsson converted from the spot. Everton lacking a solid defence throughout this season. However, they got stuck in this week um, and got their second clean sheet uh, this season. I think their last one was in the first game uh, of the season. Interesting to note, again, for Everton, the majority shareholder, I'll try to get his name right, Farhad Moshiri, I think. Um, he increased his investment of the club to four hundred million pounds. So interesting times uh, and exciting times ahead for the blue side of Merseyside. Um, Chelsea, on the other hand, um, they lost their first game in 17. A bit of a lackluster performance. Um, Lampard probably hasn't gotten the best out of his players as of yet, especially... Um, uh, oh, did I just forget his name? The guy starts with H. I've forgotten his name because he hasn't done anything. Habits. Yeah, Kai Habits, yeah. Sorry, a bit of a mind blank. He hasn't done too much. Uh, I really want to see him come into form because he's a very exciting player. Um, Pickford was my man of the match. Yeah, and interesting to note, uh, Lampard did sub Habits out, which means that he was not doing his job at all. Uh, Brooks' the same game multi. This was a really good prediction. He said Everton would win, and he got that right. Richarlison, as in any time goal scorer, did not succeed. And for both teams to score, that did not win either. But it was a good game. I enjoyed watching this one. And like you said, uh, the front three of Chelsea didn't really gel together this match day. But I am happy that Giroud is starting. I do think he's a better striker than Tammy Abraham. 
Next one, we've got Southampton versus Sheffield. Southampton winning 3-0. Comfortable win for Southampton. Sheffield looked uh, a bit at sixes and sevens. It was a pure domination from Southampton. Everyone had a good game for them. I couldn't see anyone that um, underperformed. Um, it's one that you would expect Southampton to win considering their form. Um, Sheffield had a problem holding onto the ball, I think, and that might have been due to Sanderberg uh, probably having his worst game of the season. He couldn't hold onto the ball. He kept getting dispossessed. Passes kind of going everywhere. It wasn't a great game for him. Um, Sheffield have one point from 12, um, which is the worst start to a Premier League in ever, ever. Uh, pretty bad from Southampton. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, from Sheffield. Hope they can bounce back. I do like Sheffield. I think they're a good, exciting team, especially what we saw last year. Um, che Adams was my man of the match. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Lucas. I do want to see Sheffield bounce back, uh, especially after their performances last season. They were absolutely fantastic and honestly I have no idea what is going wrong. Uh, the chairman has said that he does still back the manager, Chris Wilder, so they'll stick by him and hopefully they get a few points over this uh, busy festive period. Uh, Brooks' same game multi uh, predicted a Southampton win, which was correct. He thought Danny Ings would score. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And James Ward-Prowse also did not score. Palace versus Spurs was the next one. It was a one-all draw. I think a great result for Palace. Um, I said last week that they play really well against the top six sides, and they did this week, especially in the first half. Um, I think they deserve the draw. They deserve the 1-1. One, one. Um, Gaeta in goals for Crystal Palace was ridiculous, making world-class saves um, every five minutes, it seemed. Um, Zaha and Eze um, licking up very, very well. Extremely exciting to watch. Um when they're in full flight. Spurs probably a bit disappointed. Um, however, a lot of the other teams dropped points this week, so it would be a bit of a consolation for them. Gaeta was my man of the match. Yeah, honestly, the Spurs would be kicking themselves. This should have been their big opportunity to take top spot of the league. But like you said, Crystal Palace do play very well against the top six teams. Uh, Brooks' is same game multi. He got everything wrong on this one. Uh, he thought Tottenham would win. Sun to score and both teams not to score. So they're there, Brooks. Uh, next one, Fulham against Liverpool's a one-all draw. Fulham raced out of the blocks nice and early. Um, they were very exciting, making full use of Liverpool's vulnerable high line. Um, Declan over Reed scoring the first goal. Um, great finish it was from him. Liverpool looked rubbish, honestly. Another mediocre performance. They can't keep doing this. Um, it was very, very fortunate how they got their penalty. Um, free kick into the wall, his arm was raised. I really can't see how that's a handball, honestly, from a objective point of view. Um, his arm is protecting himself. You can't. I don't think he can give that unless his arm's up here. His arm was like this, trying to protect his face. That's not a penalty. Very lucky from Liverpool. It was a bit of a half-assed penalty as well from Salah, to be honest. Um, Fabinho was my man of the match. Yeah, look, Lucas, I totally agree with you. The interpretation of the handball rule this season is absolutely ridiculous. There are so many more penalties in games, and I just think it destroys the flow of each match. So hopefully they sort that out next season. Uh, Brooks' is same game multi. He said Liverpool would win. They did not win. He said Trent Alexander-Arnold, anytime goal scorer, did not eventuate. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold was absolutely shocking. Uh this weekend, Klopp hooked him off after about 70 minutes. So hopefully Trent gets back in form. And I think you said last week was... Did you say that you back Reese James more at the moment than Trent? Yep. I said that Reese James definitely deserves that right back spot for England team. Honestly agree with that. And Brooks also said both teams to score. So he got that right at least. I also want to give some more shit to Brooks. Uh, he said that Zaha wouldn't do anything against uh, Spurs for the last game that we covered. Um, Zaha did a lot of things, actually. Um, so, Stuart, he was drunk, but Stuart, uh, maybe big turn up sober to the next one. Uh, next game, we had Arsenal versus Burnley. Johnny, your boys in red. Not playing very well again. Um, I'm not expecting anything from Arsenal anymore. Uh, they're just extremely lackluster bit of a joke of the team they have been for a while um i've still got a soft spot for them even though i'm a liverpool fan i do enjoy watching arsenal and a good arsenal team just not this season or for the last a few seasons um 
Their fourth straight loss at home uh, for Arsenal and the first time they're losing to Burnley in the top flight since 1974. It was a great finish from Aubameyang into his own net. Um, and Arsenal were down to 10 men from most of the game, I think, uh, or a, f- a bit of the game. Um, Shaka, another hot-headed moment from the midfielder. Um, perhaps uh, Arsenal need to get rid of him. I think now's the time. They need to replace him with someone a bit more creative, a bit more positive. Um, that's what they need in their side. Josh Brownhill was my man of the match. Yeah, that was a very good summary, Lucas. I won't add any more to it. Uh, I think you hit the main points on the head. Uh, so Burnley to win was Brooks's uh, first leg of his multi, which he got. And I do remember in the podcast, he did say they would win 1-0. So that was... Well played. Although he did have Pierre Emerick Albamiang as an anytime goal scorer, that lost. But technically, Albamiang was on the score sheet, and Brooks also said both teams would score. That did not happen. The last game of the week, we had Leicester against Brighton. A commanding win from Leicester. Three goals to nil. Leicester move into third um, on the table. Uh, there's a few teams. I think West Ham, Southampton, Leicester are going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. A few teams flying under everyone's radar. Um, the game was won in the first half. Really great attacking play from Leicester. They're known for it. Um, <clears throat> a rampant James Madison. Uh, he was great. He's really hitting form, and they need him in form. He's very creative, very positive. Someone that Arsenal could potentially look at. Someone good on the ball um, in the, the attacking third. And Brighton were outclassed. Uh, yeah, James Madison was my man of the match. All right, Brooks's uh, same game multi. He said Leicester would win. Got that right. He said Jamie Vardy anytime goal scorer, correct? And he said Jamie Vardy as the first goal scorer, which uh, failed because Madison uh, took that one. But yeah, Leicester are looking very good. I think they are a dark horse in this Premier League title race. It's so tied up the top and... This festive period over the next couple of weeks is going to tell us quite a few things. Cool. Well, thanks for filling in, Johnny. Uh, we both really appreciate it, myself and Stuart. That's it for Game Week 12. We will see you for the pre-week show for Game 13. No worries, mate. Bye. See you later.